like life and death, moon and sun, it's sure to each the piper comes. And while God and Goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. Despite perfect love and perfect trust, there's no way around it, cash is a must. We've sought within, but come up short, so we come to thee, your help to court. If you would aid this temple's life, a three dollar donation would be nice. Remember well that gifts when sent, return threefold of what was spent. But if you can't, well blessed be, we shall survive, so mote it be. Merry meet YouTube. This is Lady Nefties of Universal Pagan Temple. And welcome to week 14 of Wicca, A Year in the Day in Magic. And for this week, we will be learning about different altars that you can set up for different occasions and also different altars that you can set up in your own home. So this right here, this is a full moon altar. I have the black altar cloth draped over it and multiple uh, goddess colors and I've got the god here but if you don't wish to have your god on your full moon altar that's okay this is just an example of a full moon altar now what you can also do is the full moon is associated with the mother goddess and the mother goddess's color is red so you can have a red altar instead of a black one or you can also have uh, silver or blue or black whichever color you associate with the full moon now if you're having a new moon ritual or a dark moon ritual you can have uh, white for the new moon ritual symbolizing the maiden or you can have black for the dark moon ritual symbolizing the crone and I'd like to show you guys this oil burner now, oil burners are water-based, as you can see. I've got water in there and some drops of oil. And so, on your altar, of course, you want to make sure that nothing flammable is around. And also, the substance that you are burning in your oil burner is safe to burn. And also, you never want to let the water run out in here because it will boil. And even you'll get uh, splashes of uh, hot water and oil on your altar or on yourself, so just a word of caution on oil burners. So on a full moon altar, you may want to have, in addition to the colors I spoke about, is goddess images. So over here I have some heavy goddess images. My cauldron, my chalice, my oil burner, and of course my goddess statue. And I have a lovely moon mirror here. They're, these were very popular um, about 10, 15 years ago. Oh boy, you can see my TV in the, the reflection. But um, you can get these. You can find them at uh, Goodwills or Value Villages. And I would like to speak about, because I don't think I covered it last week, about items that you find for your altar in a secondhand store. Now what you want to do with those items is you want to purify them when you get them home. You want to either put them in salt um, or um, smudge them with incense or you might want to do both. And what I did with this is I put in a salt bed, then I saged it, and then I put citrines all around it because its energy was very heavy when I got it. I think it might have been in a bad environment. So you want to make sure to get all that negative energy or any energy that just feels foreign to you so it can adapt to the energy of your altar and your space and yourself. Now a word on elemental altars. Now you could set up elemental altars all around your house in the different uh, quarters. So if you have... Uh, a space in the north of your home, you may want to set up an earth altar. Now, why would you want to set up different altars for the elements? Well, they make a great place to meditate and also focus on that element. So, why would you want to make an earth altar? Well, an earth altar, remember, in our study of the elements, we learned that the positive qualities of earth are patience, generosity, endurance, and stability. So, you could focus on those aspects and improving those aspects in your life. 
Now let's go to our water altar. Of course, you guys probably want to see my very cool Pina dragon here. It's an emerald dragon. And I've got crystals for the four quarters. I got a crystal in his paws. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now let's move over to water. Now, why would you want to have a water altar in the west part of your home? Well, to focus and improve and meditate on these qualities, such as wisdom, compassion, and harmony, and also intuition. I can see I have a ortis to symbolize water, and a solidite for the north. And for my symbol of air, I have an oil burner, which I don't have lit right now. And I've got my candle down here. And uh, if you are lacking in space and you want a chalice, um, you can have a nice shot glass such as this. This one has a uh, an orca on it. Now let's move on to fire. Now why would you want a fire altar in the southern part of your home? Well, you may want to meditate and improve these aspects in your life, such as courage, imagination, fertility, and determination. I've got Sockmet for fire, and a red tiger's eye. I've got a little bit of incense burning, and candle, and unfortunately my, uh, my chalice for fire is too big to fit on this bookcase. And lastly, we move on to air. I know I'm kind of going backwards here, but why would you want to have a air altar in the east? Well, seeing as how I am doubly ruled by Mercury, which is an air planet, since I'm a, my sun sign is in Virgo and my moon is in Gemini, this may be a good idea if you suffer from Mercury retrograde sickness. So an air altar would help you improve your life in these quarters, such as intelligence, logic, clarity, and good memory, which all qualities leave me during Mercury retrograde. <laughs> I'm sure they do for most people, even if your planet, your ruling planet isn't uh, air, or an air planet rather. But you can see I have a Horus back here and a uh, cone incense burner, nice candle, and a nicely uh, yellow colored uh, uh, vase there. And you could set these up in different quarters of your home, um, pertaining to the directions. Now obviously these, <laughs> this altar is facing north, but I just decided to take all my altars um, and move them down here below this full moon altar for the purpose of this video. Well, thank you all for watching and your assignment for this week is to set up different altars either in your home, your apartment, or your bedroom in the different quarters. Now, if you don't have room for all four, I completely understand. Or if you don't have the materials for all four, I also understand. It takes time to build a nice altar. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, so either build, you know, an air, a fire, water, or earth altar. And for next week, we'll be learning how to cast a circle. Finally, you guys are saying. <laughs> so we'll be lear learning some circle casting basics. Now that you've learned all about altars and the elements. And until next time, blessed be.